In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, greeting saints, uh, this is Pastor Adam, um, <clears throat> speaking to you from the uh, uh, parsonage. I'm in the backyard. You might hear my uh, children playing. You might hear Beth uh, trying to control them a little bit. Um, uh, but I think that's uh, how it is for a lot of people. Um, you know, the... Uh, news grows more and more frightening every day as um, uh, we consider what's going on in the world and so I'm uh, I did a kind of a live stream from my Facebook earlier we uh, <clears throat> will be able to live stream from uh, this account um, well technically we could do it now but we're gonna start doing it uh, throughout the week and um, uh, definitely next Sunday uh, my message from the parking lot of, at Grace felt a little weird and awkward, but uh, this is a weird and awkward time, isn't it? Um, um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the message that I gave earlier, it was uh, mostly taken from uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Uh, it says, uh, th through him, Jesus, of course, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Um, so brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are in this season of Lent, uh, we set aside some time to consider uh, with special attention our sin and our brokenness. We consider the weakness of our flesh, our frail mortal human nature and yet this is also the season where we set aside some special time to consider God's answer for our sin and brokenness God's answer for the weakness of our flesh God's answer to our frail mortal nature the cross of his son Jesus Christ uh, today though we are not alone in considering our weak frail and mortal nature in our community of Atlanta in our state and nation and in the world um, the clear reminder of God's judgment against sin is uh, raising awareness um, as nations of the world begin to we reel as uh, once again the heavy load of pandemic disease spreads many are becoming acutely aware that life is a fragile thing that the smallest of little things a small germ a, a virus can bring our world to a near standstill and what have we seen we've learned and seen that wealth fame status race creed culture nation none of these are respected by death while it is true that those who are older and those who are already sick have suffered from uh, this the greatest don't be fooled uh, those who are young and healthy have also been taken. Uh, for whatever reason, it seems that the youngest of our planet have been spared this sickness by the mercy of God. And we pray that this uh, goodness of God continues. But even these little ones have been impacted by the loss of parents, by uh, the shutdown of systems that care for them, uh, by the loss of brothers and sisters. Um, I'm not going to mince words with you. Uh, we have not yet to see the darkest days of this. Um, I don't say this as a professional medical person. As uh, I don't say this with some sort of supernatural act of prognostication. Um, but rather as someone who's been a careful observer of these events as they've unfolded for months now. Uh, if this disease follows the course that it has in many other nations in the past weeks. Uh, we have no reason to think that we... Uh, will not be spared the most dramatic changes to our lives and our communities. If things go 
the way they have in many other places, we will see our hospitals overrun with the sick and dying. We might see cities locked down. We might see mass graves being dug as morgues themselves struggle to keep pace with the cruel and terrible disease. Um, now I pray sincerely uh, to our God that we will be spared this terrible suffering. I pray to God daily that um, uh, my understanding of this situation is a foolish one. That our uh, careful decisions are half-hearted, uh, frightened little decisions that are uh, overworked and uh, just uh, fed by headlines. But as we watch these things play out, it appears that uh, more and more certain that our apprehensiveness to gather is not simply done out of a, an abundance of caution, but was a practical decision um, made to serve uh, our community, our nation, our world, to serve those uh, who could be sick. Um, a decision uh, to uh, not meet that has been played out in many congregations in uh, Atlanta, in uh, Georgia, in our country, and around the world. Um, these are dark and uh, scary times, the likes of which um, I, the world hasn't seen for a long time. Um, you know, we can look at different pandemics that have spread, the, the Spanish flu and things, but um, our connectivity today uh, raises the, the, the pitch, the, 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 the cry of awareness, and um, uh, it can get scary when we see all this suffering around us. Um, but in the middle of this, we're left with a question. Um, is there any room to hope? Is there any room to look for bright linings in the clouds, to look for light at the end of the tunnel? Do we uh, have hope? How do we hope? Uh, in the middle of all this uncertainty, how do we hope when it looks like everything is falling apart? As Christians, that answer seems almost too simple. Um, but we have hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Simple answers are often counted as cliche, trite, but uh, honestly, simple answers in suffering are the best answers. It sounds far too simple, I know, for Pastor Adam to say to you, hope in Christ. Um, it sounds too simple for Christians to say, well, in this I have hope in Jesus. Um, it sounds too obvious, too easy. Uh, but we remember that our God is good. We remember that our God has given us the bright light of Jesus Christ to look to as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We remember that for weak and fail, frail creatures broken under the weight of sin and the curse of death, uh, this simple answer is nothing other than the love of God. The love of God that he has given you a simple answer to suffering, a simple answer to sorrow, a simple answer to death. The love and forgiveness in his son, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, who Jesus is. Today we give thanks to the Lord our God that he has given us the greatest hope. Uh, the hope that we have in our Lord Jesus. Um, you know, we have reasons to hope now and we have reasons to hope not yet. Um... Uh, we call this proleptic eschatology uh, for uh, you theology fans, the now and not yet. Um, we remember that now uh, our Lord is uh, king over creation, right? It is our Lord Jesus Christ through whom everything was made. God the Father at work in his Son Jesus Christ to make everything that has been made. It is our Lord Jesus who set order over creation and he who continues to maintain and to sustain his creation. Um, God has been hard at work bringing his goodness to the world through his creatures, uh, through uh, you and me. Uh, God is bringing uh, his salt and light to creation. It is from the very hand of God that we have doctors, nurses, scientists, staff, um, many people who are at this very hour working tirelessly to bring healing. Um, it's from the hand of God that the earth continues to give good fruit, 
as farmers toil to supply tables. We have no shortages. Um, it's from the hand of God that we have civil and private industry uh, that are partnering to help in this time of trouble. It's from the hand of God that we have mothers and fathers uh, who love and care for their children. We uh, remember it's from the hand of God that we have a uh, uh, government that uh, God has instituted to uh, bring order to uh, the nations. Um, you know, all good things come from the hand of God. Uh, countless plagues, they have come in the past, it is true. Um, but all of them so far have either been uh, uh, wiped out or suppressed uh, by the work of God in his creation, the work of God in giving intelligent uh, and thoughtful minds to his creatures. Fearfully and wonderfully made, God uh, continues to give even our broken flesh ways to fight diseases, and it seems that there are many who will be spared the most terrible suffering in this pandemic. We thank God, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for that. Um, but we remember also uh, that there were, will be many who won't uh, be spared. Um, and it's in these sobering times uh, when this hope that we have shines the brightest. Uh, it's in these hours that... Uh, uh, as Christians, we get to do a little bit of whistling past the graveyard, a little bit of nonchalant uh, uh, rejoicing even in the face of death. It's in these hours when the love of God that's been poured into your heart uh, gives you license to be comforted, that gives you license to be joyful even in the midst of suffering. Um, you know, this is what... Paul says in the, uh, the, the the reading that I just did, he says, We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Yes, and true indeed, this hope is at the very heart of what we rejoice in. Uh, the hope that we will be glorified by God, that we will be given the glory of everlasting life uh, in deathless and diseaseless bodies. Uh, but then Paul continues to say, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. We rejoice even in our suffering, uh, because we have faith. We rejoice even in our suffering, uh, because we have faith that one way or another, our Lord Jesus Christ will lead us, his church, through the dark valley of the shadow of death. Um, our suffering in the now, it, it produces an endurance, is what Paul says. The endurance that's born from the trust of God. The endurance can that can look back to the darkest times and see there the hand of God at work in our Lord Jesus Christ. And give thanks that he has brought us through it. Uh, it's this kind of endurance that can wait patiently, that can wait rejoicing in the hope of God's answer, even when it seems like answers are impossible. Um, this is the kind of endurance that can endure even death, that can endure the deathbed, that can endure uh, the terror of the grave, and still uh, be hopeful. Um, Paul says that this kind of endurance creates character now this isn't just any old character like you might say someone has a lot of character um, if they're an interesting person but this is Christian character the kind of character that has been tried and tested in trial and trouble the kind of character the character that character that can hear the words of Christ and have hope right Jesus says in this world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world um, because we believe in the words of Jesus, um, we can take heart. Uh, even in the darkest of circumstances, um, we can rejoice. I don't know if anyone has ever been with a Christian as they have died. Um, uh, you know, death it can be very scary for everyone around. Um, but uh, if you've seen a Christian uh, give a good death, you can you can you know the hopefulness that very often. Um, 
Christians express in their final moments of life, the last time, the moments that they can communicate, um, they often speak hopefully. Um, this is a stunning hope. Um, it's this character that produces hope, an enduring and tested hope that lives in the heart of the Christian. It's this hope that shapes the life of the Christian, this hope that moves us uh, to live in certain ways. Uh, this hope that gives us to rejoice even as we see everything crumbling around us, right? Even if the earth should give way under our feet, we will not fear. Even if the mountains be thrown to the heart of the sea, we will not be afraid. Even if the very elements of creation should melt away before our eyes, we rejoice knowing that our Lord's promises are at hand. That's why we're not put to shame. Uh, a hope that doesn't put us to shame as Paul says, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Uh, this hope in Christ, this endurance, this plague-ready and uh, death-ready character of the Christian, it's no nothing short of the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit. Faith in Christ, trust in His promises, hope in His gifts of life and salvation, these are supernatural gifts that come from God, that come from the work of the Holy Spirit through His Word, through His sacraments, through His promises. These gifts come from the love of God that is in Christ our Lord. Um, it's this love that's poured out into our hearts, this love that overflows from the portion that we are given, a double portion, measured, together pressed down overflowing and overflowing from our hearts into the world in times of trouble um, we have hope now and we have hope for the not yet we have hope for God to bring healing um, to our communities and we know that on the last day when Christ returns he will bring healing to his creation Paul says, for while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Um, God has seen. He has seen our weakness. He has seen our sinful hearts. He has seen our sickened bodies. He has seen the death of his creatures. He has seen the ungodliness that is in us. And these he has answered in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, these he has answered by the death of his son Jesus. It is... He who endured, he whose character has been proven himself in temptation and terrible suffering and trials, and yet it is still he who had hope, a sure and certain hope in the glory of God, a hope that God's glory will be poured out on you, giving you eternal life and salvation in his kingdom. Um, uh, so we have so much to hope for in the right now right now you can hope for the not yet right now that hope of the last day streams to wherever you are right now we look to the hand of god at work in creation already providing healing to those who are sick we look to the vocations that he has called his creatures into and we have hope we have remembered that he has given his church to be the light of the world you know i've seen a lot of email messages a lot of posts on facebook and different things talking about uh, what Luther did during the plague in Wittenberg, what the church fathers did during the plagues in the past, how Christians have acted in the past, and these give us hope. But what I look to, what I am wondering is, what will the church do today? How will God be at work in us? Uh, how will he pour forth the love of God that is in Christ Jesus as it overflows? How do we show the hope that we have? How does it shine? Um... Right now, honestly, that's probably just staying at home with your families. I know that sounds like a simple answer, um, but simple answers are good ones, like I said. Uh, right now, uh, maybe the best way to serve your neighbors to slow down, take a little rest, spend some time at home, enjoy uh, the good books you've been waiting to read, the movies you've been wanting to watch, um, the hobbies that you wish you had more time for, um, the children that you have, that uh, uh, God has given to you to care for. Um, and if the time comes for us to call 
if, to, on the sick and the dying, if that time should come when our neighbors are in dire need, there may come a time for the healthy and strong Christians to act in ways that would surprise even them. Uh, what Luther or anyone has done in the past is all well and good, but what will we do today? How will we show Christ to our neighbor? Um, but we have hope in Christ, not just for the now, but also for the not yet. We look forward to the day when death will be removed from the world, the day when the light of Christ will overcome the darkness of the grave. And even still today, we have hope, even in the darkness, because the Holy Spirit has shown you the beacon that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Holy Spirit has given you faith in the Son of God who has died for you, the Son of God who rose for you, the Son of God who ascended for you, and the Son of God who will still soon return to restore all that is broken, soon return to give strength to the weak, the immortal Son of God who will share with you his deathless life for ages and ages unending. Uh, so to the Lord of life and salvation, be all worship, honor, praise, and glory forevermore. Uh, please join me as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you this day for your creation, uh, that you have uh, made and sustained this world uh, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And uh, we thank you that you poured out your Holy Spirit, your love, and uh, trust in your promises into our heart. Lord, we pray for hope in these hours. Uh, we pray for you to act. We pray for you to grant healing to the nations um, now. But we look forward to the healing that is uh, in the not yet. We look forward to the healing uh, that is coming when your son returns to uh, uh, fully and finally put an end to death, disease, and grave. Uh, we look forward to that day when uh, he will raise the dead up and give us... Uh, the crown of life in your kingdom which it does not end uh, so hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, we'll, uh, Lord willing, you'll be hearing from me soon.